It is centered on about eight themes on their history. And so the idea was that not only would you get an idea of what happened, but maybe why it happened and, and give the full rounding of each of So for example, the first topic uh, was called land and landscape. It's the history of the natural world around us, but it did not sort of stop when settlement began. I wrote it up, including all the environmental movements that have existed in this area, some of the famous naturalists and people such as that. And I'm finishing up with some of the more recent things that have been done in terms of, let's say, the Michael O'Brien wetlands and things like that. So the idea was to bring it a full circle all the way through to current day. And then while writing it, to ask the question, why was Red Deer, as compared to many other places in Western Canada, a hot spot of environmentalists and environmental protection long before uh, other communities. For example, when they, they started Waska Sioux Park, a lot of people think the current Waska Sioux Park started in the 80s. Actually, the original Waska Sioux Park in Red Deer started in 1911. They bought 40 acres where Piper Creek enters Waska Sioux Creek. And um, when they bought that 40 acres, part of it was turned into picnic area. But also a big chunk of that, they said, it's best left in its natural state. We don't have to clear it. We don't have to put in picnic tables. We don't have to do. There would be an area for people that wanted to sit and have a family picnic, but also a big part going up what now we call King Canyon would be kept naturally. And that was repeated over and over again. When we created the Gates Lakes Sanctuary in the 1920s, it started in 1922 and the official orders came in in 24. Uh, that was always kept as a wilderness area. And there's not many urban areas anywhere in North America where you have a true wilderness area in the center of your urban area. And the story is not only how it was preserved, but all the challenges over the years with people who didn't understand why you would want to keep a natural wilderness area in a city. And so that was part of that story. Some of the famous naturalists, uh, you know, when I say Kerry Wood, and there's lots in the book about Kerry Wood, people recognize that name because we have Kerry Wood Drive, Kerry Wood Nature Center, and he won the Governor General's Medal for Literature twice. Some of the other uh, naturalists that we don't hear much about uh, these days, although we might know them through their connections, Farley Mowat uh, has connections here in that Frank Farley, uh, his uncle and the person he was named after, uh, was a very prominent early naturalist. Another uh, topic to cover is the First Nations and Métis. Again, often uh, the story seems to stop when the first European settlers come. And yet, these are people that have lived here for millennia. In the case of the Métis, they are, an, uh, they are a true Western Canadian group because they are unique to Western Canada. And but yet, most times the story stops around 1880, 85, maybe 1890, and not much. There had never been anything really written about the Red Deer Indian Industrial School. Residential schools are a big topic these days, and yet nobody has really written the story other than Uta Mae Fox wrote her master's thesis on it, but it's never been published. So we did that. Uh, some of the other ones, uh, education, because that's important part. There were also some very unique uh, educational institutions here, the Alberta Ladies College, as it was called, created on the East Hill. Later was the main amend building for Michener Center. Uh, that was one of three uh, women's colleges created across Canada where the idea was to create educational opportunities for young rural women. But a general history of Red Deer never told the story of North Red Deer as its own separate story. So I wrote a section on North Red Deer. And actually, what's interesting is that's the one when we were the book was supposed to originally be about 280 pages. It ended up being 344. Uh, and they were saying, well, you'll have to cut back, you'll have to cut back. And I said, well, you can't re-edit that dramatically on short notice. And then they said, well, then just take out the whole chapter. Take out the one on North Red Deer. And I said, no, so I just not. said, well, there are so many things. North Red Deer was a unique community. Uh, it was much more blue collar than the rest because the main thing was the lumber company at the Great West Lumber Company, which at one time uh, employed several hundred men at that. It was a huge operation. There were other industries over there. There was tannery and other 
businesses like that. They also had plans to build a brewery, but that didn't happen. Uh, the Elk of Red Deer, that's how Red Deer got its name, because the Cree word is Waska Sioux, the Blackfoot word is Pinoka, Elk is the actually Algonquin word, but the people from Scotland when they came here, the Elk of Western Canada looked like the uh, Red Deer of Scotland, so they called it Red Deer. The Scots always win. <laughs> I'm saying that because Saturday was Bobby Burns Day. The Red Deer River Canyon, it was cut when the glacier cut through the ridge and created a deep valley that almost became a national park. The faces, or sometimes called the old man. Uh, it's all eroded now so you don't know it. It's on what some people call the hog's back. It's a sandstone ridge that juts out. But there really was an old man's face. And if you read some very old journals. There used to be graffiti carved into the sandstone that went back to at least 1820, now gone. But also Jean LaRue's uh, journals from the mid 19th century on Central Alberta talks about the dead man's head, and that's what he's referring to. And that was a previously unpublished picture showing that there was indeed a face and a head. Next. Uh, A.D. Gregson, a famous naturalist. Uh, he and his brother grew up over the fence from a cranky eccentric, and that's how they literally described him by the name of Charles Darwin. <laughs> they do not claim to be in any way influenced with him because he was the crabby eccentric neighbor over the fence they didn't like. But they did collect particularly fleas for Charles Rothschild that are now in the British Museum. And they collected so many different varieties of fleas in this area that some Entomologists used to call this the flea capital of the world. <laughs> <laughs> that has yet to appear on any of the Chamber of Commerce signs. <laughs> and that's, that is one of my favorite pictures of Gary Wood, and I had to fight to put it in because one of his daughters hates it. <laughs> but I love it because he's gone fishing, he's talking about the big one that got away, <laughs> and I think it's about 1930, and I think it's a beautiful picture. But his one daughter, we had to work on that because she said, I always hated that picture. Well, I think it works, and it's never been published before. Do you want to go back on? Did you want something else? No, no, Greg okay, Sunstar. Okay. And then help you create the gates like sanctuary. There's an aerial view of the sanctuary, which you can see this being Douglas or 55th Street, the PTS, and the lake showing how it was an old bend in the river and two oxbow lakes. There's a whole bunch of houses all around that now, except for the central park and a nature walk from the Nature Center, and that one's taken about 1990, you know, trying to bring the story up to date and including some more current things. And the Cromquist House and Bower Ponds, because no history of Red Deer would be complete if you didn't mention the Cromquist House. Did that work? <laughs> <laughs> uh, First Nations, that is a beautiful picture and I've always loved it. I think some people I know even have it mounted on their wall. They got a coffee. And that's a, a little stony First Nations girl. And I think it's just a magnificent photograph of her. And the next one is also quite interesting because these two, uh, I don't know if they were in their late teens or early 20s, they didn't really want to have their picture taken, so they covered their face. And actually, that's cultural to the stony. Uh, for those of you complaining about your winter, <laughs> Uh, 150 years ago, that's how you'd be spending the winter. <laughs> uh, the ruins of Rocky Mountain House, that picture's taken about 1905 or 6, and they're talking about this old historic site, which they date back here to 1802, actually it was much earlier than that, it goes back to the 1790s, but they didn't have written records to go through, so they guessed at the date, but that's what the chimneys looked like about 1905 or 6. Mackenzie Brothers, uh, Métis from Manitoba, wonderful entrepreneurs. That picture's taken on the flats up by where the uh, uh, golf course is, Riverbend Golf Course. They provided a lot of the first lumber in this area. They did uh, thrashing. They built the first traffic bridge across the Red Deer River. They never built a traffic bridge before, but they sat down and they said, well, a common sense way to build a bridge would be this. It was not pretty. 
<laughs> but it lasted five years. Then the government engineers decided we need to build a proper engineered bridge. They came in, built a new expensive engineered bridge, and it went out the next spring with the ice. <laughs> That's a true story. The story of the Red Deer Indian Industrial School, and there is a picture of uh, the pupils in schools. Uh, let me think here. Maybe I better not hold up. One of the little boys in the front row is Ralph Steinauer, who left, became the Lieutenant Governor. And this is Edward Michener. And he, uh, his son, Roland Michener, became the Governor General of Canada. Yeah. Uh, pictures to the school. And also the celebration of Treaty 7 Centennial, trying to make sure we keep bringing it up to date because that's an important benchmark when they had their own way of not always celebrating, but commemorating the signing of the treaties. Saskatchewan Land and Homestead Company. Well, I mean, they bought 115,000 acres of land and they paid $2 an acre and sold it for 10 so they could afford fancy brochures. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, that's an original brochure that we got a copy of it to include. That's John T. Moore. He was the managing director. He had been an alderman of the city of Toronto. He is very much a forerunner of the lifestyle of Rob Ford in some respect, except he didn't drink. Uh, he was very colorful. He was continually in trouble with the law and he always managed to get out of it. Uh, but he did come out here. He came out on the Canadian Pacific Railroad until the railway ran out. Then he went by horseback, cross country, came, camped in what's now Rotary Park at the foot of uh, Piper's Mountain, went to the top of the hill, looked over the valley and said, we're going to buy land here. He was so impressed by what he saw. He also became Red Deer's first MLA. And he started the power company, the telephone company, and a bunch of other stuff. He really was a real wheeler dealer. Uh, he built a big mansion in what's now Rosedale in Toronto. And one time they had some problem with the water mains. And so they went to dig them up to fix them and found out there was a water main going from the main city one off to John T. Moore's house that was not recorded in any maps <laughs> or, here, or was there any permit mentioned. <laughs> but he grew great roses and they take water. Uh, this is a really wonderful picture, never published before. A young Leonard Gates, his wife Carolyn, and their youngest son Isaac, who for some reason preferred to be called Jack. And that is a beautiful picture. That's probably taken in Brandon. It's not taken in Red Deer. But it's such a terrific picture of him and never been published before we used that one. Red Deer, 1887, Fort Armando. Picture taken by J.B. Terrell, after whom the Terrell Museum at Drumheller is named. The map of the crossing, what it looked like. That didn't show up all that well, but shows you the Fort Armando being here. The Mackenzie family, the ones who I talked about who built the bridge. That, we found a picture of them in 1887. This is Roderick Mackenzie and his family sitting on their homestead which would be about where Garden Heights subdivision is now. Uh, this is the Moore family, and they took a postcard picture of their log cabin out in Centerville, the center of everything. And you notice that they even had the Kodak Company ad, be it ever so humble, etc. and Red Deer, Alberta. <laughs> And then this is Ross Street looking west. It's one of the first pictures of Ross Street because they haven't built the station yet. That is a box car that they're using as the temporary station. And I think only one building in that picture still exists. Next. Keems and Winter. I threw in a couple of winter pictures because that's what you look you dealt with if you were a delivery person or you were hauling stuff for people. That's what you had to do very early in the morning to get the horses ready to go out in 40 below and haul people's stuff for them. You notice one fellow oh, has a Oh, well, that's fine. One fellow's got a really nice heavy coat and a scowl. Uh, next is, that's when Red Deer started to grow. That's the CPR Square. We had a band shell for performances. All the hotels were surrounding the back. This was a fountain given by Edward Michener. Uh, when he stepped down as mayor of Red Deer, he gifted it to the town. And this is a billboard saying, 20,000 acres wild lands for sale by the Saskatchewan Land and Homestead Company. Next. Uh, the Cultural Life, the Purdy Opera House, Queen of Hearts production. 
And as everybody here has recognized, this is Mary Joan Cornett's grandmother, right in the middle. Of Mary Joan pointed out to me, which I did not count and realize, she said, you know you have five pictures of my grandmother in this book? Picturesque Red Deer in the Rex Theater. Uh, they were being very picturesque. <laughs> St. Luke's Parish Hall. St. Luke's had a beautiful, large public uh, parish hall. It sat 250 people. It had a full stage. It had an auditorium. It had a dining area. It was a beautiful facility. It was torn down in the early 60s to become a parking lot. It is still a parking lot. But it was a beautiful, this is taken in the 20s. Those are girl guides actually in front. Uh, the Amazons women's hockey. At the time that the uh, Red Deer men's hockey team was not noted for its strength, <laughs> these women uh, won virtually every game they played. They were never the national champions because when they played the Eaton's team from Winnipeg, the Eaton's team from Winnipeg said, oh, this was just an exhibition game, so you don't get the title. <laughs> but they won. But uh, also, this uh, woman in the back, Adeline Stevenson, uh, to show what a wonderful athlete was, she went into what were then called the, the Banff Winter Carnival, but was in effect the Alberta Winter Games. She played three periods of hockey, and then she entered the speed skating long race and got the silver. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm picking on anybody, but do you think a multi-million dollar NHL player would play three full periods of hockey and then almost win a speed skating race? Maybe they would. And this is the first curling rink in Red Deer. It was outdoors. This is the old Red Deer Public School built in the 1890s, and they're curling outdoors because we didn't have an indoor facility yet. And that picture's taken about 1900. That's the parade to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Canadian Confederation. They did not have a big ceremony for the 50th anniversary because the First World War was on. So they did a big one in 27, and that's the parade. That's the Red Deer Community Band. That's the Arlington Hotel. There's the cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, big controversy after the uh, First World War was there were two things that were destroying the morals of the community. Playing pool, which undermined the young people, and playing golf on Sundays. <laughs> and if you read the newspapers from 1919, there are pages and pages of outrage, letters to the editor, about how the morals in Red Deer had gone to heck. <laughs> One guy wrote, he said, it is terrible that my children have to be subjected to watching people defiling the Sabbath playing golf. <laughs> Early radio, where you had to use earphones to hear. And try to notice the kids in the house, they didn't let him know while they're posing for the picture. Uh, this is the radio station CKLC, which was up by the hospital in 1927. Just out of the picture, they had a sign that said, it is more blessed to broadcast than receive. <laughs> and this is uh, Kerry Wood's brother. Got changed disappearance still. But one of the early jazz bands in Red Deer. Uh, coronation pageant, 1937, celebrating the coronation of King George the Sixth and the Queen Mother, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Uh, CHCA TV coming at the brand new City Hall with their broadca uh, mobile broadcast center. A little Jeep. The Art Center, which opened in 86. Uh, an Arthur Erickson building really uh, uh, created a great cultural facility for India. I lost on that one when they were trying to uh, do the opening gala. I said, why don't, there's a promising new artist who used to go to Red Deer College, why don't you ask her to perform? Her name is Katie Lang. They didn't do it. <laughs> of course, then she said bad things about beef, and so maybe it was <laughs> the first school in Red Deer, the log one, 1887. Uh, the castle, as it was known, the public school built in 1907. Uh, Three-story building destroyed by arson, unfortunately. A magnificent old building. Uh, the North Red Deer Cottage School up uh, in North Red Deer on, is it 60th Street? Yeah. And uh, yeah. unfortunately there's a crease, but we left it in because that's part of But that building built 
They finished it in 1911, but they officially opened it in February of 12. Uh, the central schools, the old high school, and then the castle. Also, there's a nice picture of the high school building being built in 1928, courtesy of another person in the back row. <coughs> Square dancing at the Red Deer Coppice of the high school in 1947, then they used the old army huts for the school. The front entrance, they built a permanent building, and they were very proud of it, and they named it after Lindsay Thurber, who initially declined to have the school named Adams by any, this is a quote that is true, he said, why would I want to have a school named after me? I'm not dead yet. <laughs> but then he was going to move to Nova Scotia, and I don't know if he thought that was the same as passing, so he could have a school named after me. My friend Bud Akin at ECU School in the Revolutionary Science broadcast to teach science using television. Next. Holy Family School, designed by a person who worked with the Catholic School Board. Uh, he designed it, and it is one of the best designed schools in Red Deer. Unfortunately, he died of cancer just as they finished it. But for a man who was not a recognized architect per se, he designed an absolutely beautiful functional school. Red Deer College, 1982, when they started building the residences out on the old landfill and expanding the campus. Raw Street, 1908, that is Hog Day, Hog Marketing Day. Everybody came to town on Thursday because you come in and you sell your hogs. <laughs> and that's what, that's what, this would be, uh, this would be City Hall Park where this building is. This became the first fire hall. And then these buildings were to that. This after the uh, pretty opera house burned down, they turned the Massey Harris Warehouse into the Rex Theater. Next. The Alberta Hotel in 1910, uh, the old, beautiful old one, and then the annex, the brick annex. The brick annex is still standing. It's the uh, east wing to the Buffalo Hotel. Everything else in that picture is gone. Uh, Gates Avenue, 1914, when the war broke out. And Gates Cornette, Drug and Bookstore, and the old Bank of Montreal. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to leave. I apologize. No, I lost the password. Well, he's a very clever young man, and I like what he, how he describes you. <laughs> the Red Deer uh, Courthouse under construction in 1930. The Depression started. They need some way to create employment. Gates Avenue in 55. Again, the Bank of Montreal, Gates Cornette, and the old Osborne's Ladies Wear. Everything in that picture is now gone. Gates Avenue from the South Hill, and actually, I, when I was doing this, I used to put up, well, I still do, I put up pictures on my Facebook site just to see what ones got reaction, what ones didn't. So I guess that kind of destroys my thing about previously unpublished. Some of these were originally were on Facebook. I had a woman phone me and said, I know exactly when that was taken, because that picture was taken when the Safeway store opened, and that was the day President Kennedy was shot. And she recognized it, and she knew exactly when it was taken. So that's November 1963. No snow yet. The bay, in its glory, before it became the Millennium Center. The depart when I was a kid, everybody went there because then Nesclay would just go up and down. <laughs> Didn't take much entertainment. The water tower under construction, and you can see some people say, I, I, always, I said the official name is the Horton Spheroid. That proves it was indeed the Horton Spheroid. It used to be on the tower. Uh, Mayor Serkin and the proposed leisure center, now the Cullicut. That was the sod turning. The water tower, this last year when they did the laser show on. And what really impressed me, and I always tease Leslie Burton about it, just as they put the lasers on it, a terrific thunderstorm came over and yes. I said, how did you get nature to match your light show? <laughs> <laughs> the special council meeting, uh, they invited as many former members of council as they could to come there in the current council at the time. And what makes this one quite sad for me is there were already three people when that picture was taken in March, already three people in that picture have passed. Mm -hmm. Shows you don't wait, people may pass before you know it. The little gates development. You know, sometimes when you're driving down the street, you don't realize what it looks like. It actually really is quite an attractive feature. Mm -hmm. Veterans Park. That's a picture taken by Dwight Arthur. I think it's a terrific picture showing the park at night. There's a lot of art history in that. 
that I included it. And then to conclude is <laughs> we keep saying this is the worst, snowiest winter ever. That's 1974. That's 40 years ago. And that's the road on the way to the canyon ski hill. So, sorry, there's very little in Alberta that is unprecedented weather. <laughs> and that's the slideshow. Any questions? And I'm sorry to Charlie, and he was the announcer for the station. First school in Red Deer, the log one, 1887. Uh, the castle, as it was known, the public school built in 1907. Uh, Three-story building, destroyed by arson, unfortunately. A magnificent old building. Uh, the North Red Deer Cottage School, up uh, in North Red Deer, on is it 60th Street? Yeah. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, there's a crease, but we left it in because that's part of but that building built. They finished it in 1911, but they officially opened it in February of 12. Uh, the Central Schools, the old high school, and then the castle. Also, there's a nice picture of the high school building being built in 1928, courtesy of another person in the back row. <coughs> Square dancing at the Red Deer Compass of the High School in 1947, and they used the old army huts for the school. Ross Street, 1908, that is hog day, hog marketing day. Everybody came to town on Thursday because you come in and you sell your hogs. <laughs> and that's what, that's what this would be, uh, this would be City Hall Park where this building is. This became the first fire hall. And then these buildings were to that. This, after the uh, pretty opera house burned down, they turned the Massey Harris Warehouse into the Rex Theater. Mm. Next. The Alberta Hotel in 1910. Uh, the old, beautiful old one. And then the annex, the brick annex. The brick annex is still standing. It's the uh, east wing to the Buffalo Hotel. Everything else in that picture is gone. Uh, Gates Avenue, 1914, when the war broke out. And Gates Cornet, Drug and Bookstore, and the old Bank of Montreal. Gates Avenue in 55, again, the Bank of Montreal, Gates Cornet, and old Osborne's Ladies Wear. Everything in that picture is now gone. I had a woman for me and said, I know exactly when that was taken. Because that picture was taken when the Safeway store opened, and that was the day President Kennedy was shot. And then to conclude, is we keep saying this is the worst, snowiest winter ever. That's 1974. That's 40 years ago. And that's the road on the way to the canyon ski hill. So, sorry, there's very little in Alberta that is unprecedented weather. And that's the slideshow. <laughs>